Hello and welcome to our third encounter as part of the public program series, Indigenous Rights, Art and Environmental Justice, taking place in conjunction with the exhibition, The Yanomami Struggle, which is on view through April 16th, it's our last week. Please um, get tickets if you can. Um, on behalf of our partners at IMS and the Fondation Cartier, we are so honored to have you here to share in space with us. Um, please note, that today's conversation will take place in Portuguese. Consecutive translation from Portuguese to English will be available. Um, please also remember to silence your phones and refrain from flash photography. Um, and now I would like to introduce, I'm very excited, he just landed, I think this morning, the curator of the exhibition, Tiago Negaro. Thank you, Tamara. Um, so, Good morning, very nice to see you. Um, I think I'm going to speak in Portuguese and English, but I'll, I'll first start, start with the English. Um, yeah, I'm super happy to be back here again. i um, very excited that this, you know, with the resonance of the show here in the US, we had a great opening in the beginning of February, and now I think we're going to have other very important events and, until the, the last days of the exhibition. Uh, I hope you had a chance to visit the show and, you know, uh, witness the relevance of art and mobilization and collaboration to defend the sovereignty of the Yanomami people, but also the wider indigenous populations all over the world. I'm super happy to be here with uh, these very important guests and continue this program. I uh, just want to thank the partners of the exhibition, Instituto Moreira Salles, where I work but also Hutukara Associação Yanomami, the Yanomami Association, and Instituto Socioambiental in Brazil. They are leading a very difficult and very important uh, fight for the respect of indigenous populations in, in the country. And I'm here to just to introduce João uh, Biel from Brazil Lab at Princeton University. I, will, I would like to thank them for all the support in this program. Um, and uh, to thank Drone, thank Brazil, thank Princeton, and also uh, our partner here uh, on the public program, Tamara, uh, and also Juana and George, who have been you know, helping to organize and connect not only the Brazilian indigenous uh, conversations with the local and indigenous conversations here in the US. So I, I, I wish you a very good talk. I will talk very quickly in Portuguese. Eu queria muito agradecer, aqui estou muito feliz de estar de volta para essa para esse evento, né? A exposição foi é, eu tive aqui na, na abertura da exposição, a gente teve a presença dos Yanomami aqui, foi um, foram dias muito importantes, muito emocionantes, né, no momento de, de crise muito grande que é, a, a, a população atravessa no Brasil. E eu queria agradecer a Rotucara Associação Yanomami e o Instituto Socioambiental pela parceria e pela dedicação e pela generosidade com que eles né, nos ajudaram a colocar de pé esse projeto. Queria agradecer muito também os parceiros aqui do SHED e da Fundação Cartier. E queria agradecer o João Biel, que é o é, diretor do Brasil Lab da Universidade de Princeton e professor de Antropologia, por ter nos ajudado também a fazer essa parceria e organizar esse evento, além das nossas convidadas ilustres, que o João vai é, apresentar. Então é isso. Muito obrigado e bom, boa conversa para todos. Thank you. So, welcome, bienvenidos, bienvindas. It's a, it's a great pleasure to be here. And thank you, Thiago and Tamara, for the introduction, and the shed, and, and Alex for the, the warm, warm, warm welcome and all the support. And thank you all for joining us here today. It's really a great pleasure and honor to have Princeton and the Brazil Lab helping organize this event in conjunction with the wonderful friends from the shed, the Cartier Foundation for Contemporary Arts, and the Maria Salles Institute. Our world's on edge, traversed by inequality, violence, systemic racism, and climate emergency, demand different kinds of listening, novel collaborations, and a radical imagination that can transform our collective sense of what's possible and desirable. I want to thank the SHED's team and the Brazil Lab's team for putting together this event so that we can learn about indigenous rights, art, and environmental justice from Chai Surui and Samara Patasho, two of the world's most daring and visionary indigenous thinkers and doers. And we do so 
in the spirit of solidarity with all indigenous peoples across the Americas. The Yanomami, meaning human beings in their own language, have been living, nurturing, and making the Amazon rainforest what it is, a bastion and breath of biocultural diversity and life for over 1,000 years. We are here to honor the ways they and fellow Brazilian indigenous peoples have resisted extermination and are shifting political and legal alignments and experimenting with media, technology, and the arts to open new pathways for a transformed humanity. The wondrous exhibition, The Anomami Struggle, curated by the one-of-a-kind Thiago Nogueira, whom we just heard from a few minutes ago, and his great team, especially Valentina, who is also with us here today, is anchored in the extraordinary collaboration and friendship between the incredible artist and activist Claudia Andujar and the Yanomami people, most notably with the shaman and leader Davi Kopenawa, whose words and dreams suffuse this vital cultural space here in New York City, breaking our frames of thought and enlarging our capacity to see. If you have not visited the exhibition yet, please do so and be transformed by it. The creative collaboration between Andujar and Kopenawa played a key role in the struggle for the demarcation of the Yanomami territory, the largest indigenous territory in Brazil in the early 1990s. And its force and longevity of the collaboration, of the creative collaboration and activism are a wondrous inspiration for us all. Since contact in the 17th century, the Yanomami have been facing waves of extermination and have been fighting for their collective survival. Conquistadores, missionaries, state developmentalists, paramilitary groups, and illegal settlers and gold miners have brought environmental destruction, contamination, and diseases. In scientific racist accounts, the human beings, plural, Yanomami, have been wrongly stereotyped as, quote, primitive, fierce people, when in fact, they have time and again had to find the means to assert their relational arts of living and to safeguard the forest for us all. The opening of this historic exhibition in early February here at the Shed coincided with the latest political economic campaign of decimating the Anomami Foundations of Livelihood. This world-ending violence reflected the long-standing pattern of state projects to assimilate or eliminate indigenous peoples and to replicate native North American genocides. It was brought to a halt, thank goodness, by the inauguration of the new president of Brazil, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, who has made fighting who has made fighting inequality and climate change and protecting indigenous rights central to his agenda. Organized in partnership with the Brazilian NGOs Utucara Associação Yanomami and Instituto Socioambiental, the Yanomami struggle came to the US in early February after acclaimed exhibitions in Sao Paulo, Paris, London, and other European cities. Over time, the exhibition has significantly transformed and expanded to include more than 80 drawings, paintings, and films by Yanomami artists. Brazilian indigenous peoples are now saying, nunca mais um Brasil sem nós. Never again a Brazil without us. So be it also in academia and in the arts, never again without the indigenous transformational presence. As David Kopenawa himself powerfully said in his classic book, The Falling Sky, written together with anthropologist Bruce Albert, when your eyes follow the tracks of my words, you will know that we are still alive. It is the tragedy of this genocidal history and the immensity of this life otherwise that Samara, Patasha, Chai Surui, 
from the Patasho and Surui peoples and the hundreds of other Brazilian indigenous groups and body as they remake not a future that will not come, but a dire present that needs our work and repair. During his Princeton visit, right before the opening of the exhibition, Tavi Kopenawa told an enraptured audience, and I cite Tavi, before our Amazonian forest ends, we are drawing it. We are drawing it to show to each community, each city, these drawings of our people. The drawings show the trees rustling, the mountains moving. It is crucial that city folks show respect. To respect, to protect the earth lungs, the Amazonian rainforest, we cannot let it be destroyed. To expand the intergenerational dialogue that the Yanomami struggle so beautifully showcases, we have with us today two of the most active voices and most important indigenous leaders and thinkers of our times. At the end of the Yanomami struggle exhibition, uh, if you have gone through it, if not, please stop by. You will see a video, a striking video, with the indigenous philosopher and activist Ailton Krenaki talking to the Brazilian Congress in the late 1980s in the transition to democracy. As he talks, he smears his face black, conveying the readiness of indigenous peoples to claim their territory and to indigenize politics. My generation has written rights into law, Karnaki used to say. The next generation must make sure that the laws are implemented and become rights. And that's exactly what our two very special guests are doing for the sake of their peoples, the planet, and all of us. Chai Surui is a young leader of the Surui people from the Sete de Setembro indigenous land of the Brazilian state of Rondonia. She has been recognized worldwide for fighting against deforestation and for the protection of the rights of indigenous peoples and other Amazonian communities. Chai is the founder and coordinator of the Indigenous Youth Mov Movement of Rondonia, and in November 2021, she was a keynote speaker at the climate conference in Glasgow. Samara Patasha was born in Coroa Vermelho, Coroa Vermelha village, in the traditional homelands of the Patasha people in Porto Seguro, Bahia, Brazil. She is an attorney and a PhD candidate in law at the University of Brasilia. She has been an innovator in the field of indigenous territorial rights. Samara is currently chief advisor for inclusion and diversity at the General Secretariat of the Presidency of the Brazil's Electoral Court. She has served as legal advisor to numerous indigenous organizations, including the articulation of indigenous peoples of Brazil. Please join me in giving Chai Surui and Samara Patasha our warmest welcome. So this is our format today. Uh, Chai and Surui will each speak for about five minutes. After that, uh, I will ask them a few questions based on conversations we have had in the past few days at Princeton and also this morning here at the Shed. Uh, the wonderful Ana Laura Mamaceda will be translating. We will improvise in between Portuguese and English. Uh, I will ask the questions in Portuguese and then I will give you a little con condensed version in English. Chai will speak uh, in English and will, with the help of, um, of uh, Ana Laura, and um, Samara will speak in Portuguese, and, and Laura will be translating. And then after this initial round of, of que questions, conversations among them, we will open up to questions from the audience. So Chai, the mic is yours. Uh, good morning, because I don't have lunch yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but I would like to start uh, with a poem. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm indigenous, my brother. 
because I'm indigenous, my man. They paint all the dust on this ground black. All the pain of a cross they plant in my chest. They pluck it, palud, and they stick it, Jesus, instead. Because I'm indigenous, my brother. Because I'm indigenous, my man. Alcohol, shoe, ring, t-shirt, a small salary. I'm a peasant. A hut is a shack on the side of the world, so less. No more hunting, empty belly. Without the thirst of the freedom, and today, without a past. Without Palud, and without chief. But with God, and even a deputy. Thank you, thank you for first, thank you, João, thank you all the partners to inviting us to be here today. Uh, and I would like to uh, start talking about the art, about the resistance. Um, because not only the Yanoman, but uh, a lot of indigenous people, we are producing art. How a uh, form to resist and to show our realities, to bring our cosmology, our knowledge, and to show you new words, other words. new ways because today we uh, we have uh, the biggest uh, battle the collective battle the climate crisis and if you want to win we need uh, understand that we need to support the indigenous peoples but more than this more than to show our resistance, to show what's going on in our land. With the art, we want to show our beauty. All the, the things that we have, this is good in our land, because we don't have only bad things there. We are the indigenous people, we are more than this. So with the art, the Yanomami show the beauty, como é que encanta? The enchantment. The enchantment, these people, that uh, segura? Holds. Hold the sky. And bring the importance that we never stop doing. The big, uh, the big leader, Davi Yanomami, that uh, was here, he said that the, the white people have a, it's difficult to listen to us. And you stop to dream. So he uh, write the, um, falling sky. Falling sky. Do you understand what, uh, how the Yanomami think? So uh, you, we use the ancestral uh, ancestrality and the art, how instrument, instrument, instrument to transform. The indigenous peoples uh, to transform uh, and protect the indigenous peoples means this thing that we call just climate. So protecting indigenous peoples means not only a future, but means we have a present. 
And <laughs> it's and it's because that that we say that the future is ancestral. Because to have a future and to have a present, we need to um, grow or pass? Pass time. Pass to the ancestrally. Because we, we understand not only we are living here, but we are the nature. We understand that. We, and I say to, to you, we know other ways. When these people here say that only one A, we are showing you that's not. In this world, we have a lot of words, and, in, in, and we have a lot of ways that we are putting in practice in our lands right now to change what is going on, all this we are uh, already suffering the consequence of the climate freezes. If you don't send something, just say, because I need, uh, I'm, um, you know, I'm learning. <laughs> so, I'm here um, to remember you, the importance to, saber? to know, to know, listen. And to listen the forest, the forest that is speaking with us, and talk through or pass through uh, or through the dreams, you know. So, uh, with the art, the indigenous peoples, we are spring and planting dreams to postpone the end of the world, bringing a reflection about uh, a world that can, cannot see other words, and because that cannot see just all other ways. So the fight of the indigenous peoples is not only our fight. And now we know that, all the world know that, the importance of the Amazon, the importance of the forest. So this fight, it's your fight. And it's a fight uh, for the human rights, but more than this. It's a fight for the life. Because you, you, the, the white people, uh, create this thing that you uh, call humans to say, okay, you are human, you're not. You know? So we are talking not about humans, we are talking about lives. Because the animals are lives, the forest is alive. And the importance uh, this so it's necessary um, to put this fight in the center of the discussion because still today we continue to talk about the economy or whatever and not the what's the most important people life. So it's, I'm here to say to you to come back to dream. And listen, who know how uh, live, read these dreams. Because the dreams are very important, not only uh, to my future, but, but to the Yonaman culture. He, I don't know if you go to the exposition, exhibition. exhibition, but there we had a beautiful art uh, from the Ehuana Yonamami. 
a very strong woman that dream and draw, draw, and draw. And she, como é que é meu sonho não tá certo? Dreamt with the freedom of her people. And so dream is necessary. And like Juana, I dream as well. With the freedom, not only my people, but the freedom of the old indigenous peoples. And today I'm here to invite you to dream with me. Thank you. Bom dia, good morning, buenos dias, e na língua do meu povo, é Hayokuan. Good morning, buenos dias, uh, e na língua do meu povo, e na língua do meu povo, e na língua do meu povo, Hayokuan. E as pessoas respondem, Hayosho. E as pessoas respondem, Hayosho. Hayosho. De novo, Bo é, Hayokuan. Hi, show. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Bom dia. Eu me chamo Samara. Eu sou uma mulher indígena do povo Pataxó, do estado da Bahia, que fica no Nordeste brasileiro. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, my name is Samara Pataxó. Um, I come from the state of Bahia. In, I'm sorry. In Nordeste. In the northeast of Brazil. Sim. É, o meu povo é o povo de, um dos povos de primeiro contato com os colonizadores, com os invasores portugueses. Né? E a história tida como oficial do Brasil ela foi contada pelos vencedores. Né? E, então, eles dizem que o Brasil foi descoberto, mas nós, desde sempre, enfatizamos que o Brasil foi invadido. E isso começou lá no meu território. Então, nós somos povos que resistimos há mais de 500 anos e até hoje né, estamos aqui lutando, e eu sou uma dessa, né, dessas pessoas que é fruto da resistência do meu povo Pataxó e de outros povos indígenas que seguem resistindo e lutando para existir. Então, a história da história do Brasil, o que nós chamamos de Brasil, foi contada pelos supostos vencedores. Um, and it was told in the context of the invaders. So um, we would like to, uh, to, make, uh, to draw attention to that, to, to this fact, to this historical fact, that we actually uh, have been there uh, through history, uh, before that, before the invasions, and that we have res been resisting for more than 500 years. And I am a fruit, I am, uh, I'm, Uh, sprung out of this resistance, and I'm existing and fighting and inheriting it. Ah, e para mim é uma alegria estar aqui hoje nesse espaço dividindo com a Chai e com todos vocês que aqui estão e poder também é, ver a, a exposição como a arte ela é importante para de alguma forma chamar a atenção de problemas ou de povos, né? geralmente povos específicos, nesse caso, o povo Yanomami, mas eu costumo dizer que a Amazônia brasileira, o povo Yanomami hoje, no, no atual contexto, é uma vitrine em relação aos demais povos indígenas do Brasil para o mundo. É a porta de entrada, digamos assim, para esse primeiro choque, para esse primeiro conhecimento de o que, que está acontecendo e quem são os povos indígenas do Brasil. E depois que as pessoas elas olham para olham a Amazônia, olhem para o povo Yanomami, elas são convidadas também a olhar quem são os demais povos do Brasil, o que, que eles têm passado, quais são os problemas. Então, é, é um convite também para que as pessoas possam é, buscar 
outras realidades também dos povos indígenas, de que existem indígenas também fora da Amazônia brasileira, de que, assim como o bioma Amazônia, ele é muito importante, os outros biomas brasileiros, que nós temos cinco biomas, né, Pampa, Cerrado, Mata Atlântica né, e a Caatinga e a Amazônia, todos eles são importantes. E nesses outros biomas também existem povos indígenas que lutam para que esses biomas possam existir, porque o bioma Amazônia ele não se sustenta sozinho. Então, é necessário a gente também preservar os outros biomas e lutar também pela sobrevivência e resistência dos demais povos indígenas. Um, I often say that the Amazon is like um, um, a showcase or like a, um, um, it, it's an example of, and it's like a door of entrance to what is happening with the indigenous peoples in Brazil. So after you get to know the Yanomami, you can also get to know the other peoples of Brazil and the other realities and, and get to know their knowledges. So um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I always invite people to search for uh, the indigenous peoples and their knowledges because we are much more than just the Amazon and the Amazon is, is, is enormous, but we, are, we have other biomes. We have the Pampa, we have the Cerrado, we have the Caatinga. There's the Amazonia. Amazonia and there's a fifth one? Mata Atlântica. Mata Atlântica. Um, so, We are fighting for our resistance here, and um, these biomes, they don't sustain uh, themselves alone. They are part of the earth, and they are all entangled. And they are all important for our collective uh, survival. Então, é, no meu caso, eu sou, eu, é, sou uma profissional da área do direito, né? eu sou formada em direito, sou advogada, e, desde muito cedo, a minha a luta do meu povo é a luta pela terra, a luta para a preservação da nossa Mata Atlântica, mas, sobretudo, a luta de continuarmos sendo indígenas em um território de resistência, que é o território Pataxó, que, mesmo a gente sendo povos de primeiro contato, né, desde 1500, ainda hoje a gente sofre problemas históricos, né, que vêm desde o passado e que se desdobram ainda hoje. Então, a minha geração é uma geração de jovens que tiveram acesso à educação, e eu falo educação, educação básica, de escola, de ensino fundamental mesmo, de aprender a ler, a escrever, porque a nossa geração passada, os nossos pais, os nossos avós, sequer tinham o direito de estudar, não puderam nem se escolarizar. Então, a minha geração é a geração que teve acesso à escola, que somos as primeiras pessoas a entrar nas universidades, então, eu fiz direito, porque eu queria aprender das leis para ajudar o meu povo. E depois, trazer esse retorno específico, atuando na luta, na defesa dos nossos territórios e da nossa dignidade. Então, foi um desafio também passar por essa trajetória acadêmica também, onde ainda há ausência de indígenas, de professores indígenas nesses espaços. Então, a minha formação, eu falo que eu tive duas formações, uma formação técnica na universidade, mas também a minha formação na luta junto ao movimento indígena do meu Estado, na defesa dos direitos indígenas, e isso foi né, me formando, digamos assim, enquanto profissional, enquanto pessoa, para que pudesse estar atuando na defesa dos nossos direitos. E também inspirada com pessoas que já iniciaram uma caminhada né, na nossa frente, como outros advogados indígenas que já atuavam no caso, hoje, a ex-deputada federal e atual presidenta da Fundação Nacional dos Povos Indígenas, a Joênia Wapchan, ela é uma inspiração para mim e para toda uma geração de jovens advogados que escolheram entender das leis para ajudar as suas comunidades. Então, so, um In my case, uh, my formation, my, my background comes from uh, law. And um, since an early age, I was raised to, to fight, to fight for the Mata Atlântica, to fight for my, my territory, for the territory Pataxó, and for our resistance. So um, 
and I'm part of a, a new generation, a younger generation, um, and I'm fighting, um, this is a generation that had the uh, access to just basic education. And our, the last generation, our um, grandparents, they, m most of them didn't. And uh, just to learn to read and write is already a fight uh, that we are um, having. Uh, and So we are fighting for our dignity and for our territory. And uh, I wanted to learn law to help my people. And I'm also inspired by um, a generation that uh, um, was able to, to start entering the state for the first time, uh, like Joana Wapishana, uh, who inspires uh, young lawyers uh, like me. And what I say is that I have two formations, that I have two backgrounds. One is technical that I learned at the university, and the second one comes from activism, comes from in, uh, indigenous groups and the alliances that I made and that made my fight. Então, é, esse é o desafio, né, de estar em espaços que nunca antes foi acessado por pessoas de uma origem similar à minha. E geralmente quando a gente chega em espaços institucionais, seja uma universidade, seja dentro do Congresso Nacional, seja dentro de um órgão indigenista, nós somos as primeiras, as pioneiras a chegar em determinado espaço. E quando a gente chega nesses espaços, a gente tem que pensar que nós somos as primeiras, mas não queremos ser as únicas. Que a gente tem que abrir caminho e a gente tem, como eu e a Chay tem costumado falar, hackear o sistema. <risos> mas... É... Ah, ok. <risos> Um, for us, it's a challenge to get to these spaces of power, to spaces where we have our voices heard. Yeah. Uh, and in these institutional spaces, just like the Congress, like uh, indig even indigenous organizations, we are just getting there right now. Um, so um, we are the first ones to get there, but we always say uh, amongst us that we will not be the last ones, that this is just the beginning. And we are going to hack the system. <risos> e, e mais assim, do que acessar o sistema, o sistema que já está posto, seja acesso à justiça, que é uma das minhas lutas, né, e do movimento indígena, para que tenhamos acesso à justiça, de pleitear os nossos direitos que já estão no papel, para que eles realmente aconteçam. Então, mais do que acessar o sistema, mais do que ter um assento no Congresso Nacional, mais do que ter uma vaga na universidade, Então, não é só acessar, mas é transformar também o sistema acessado. So, we are now getting access to the system. Um, and in my case, I work with the access to justice, to, uh, to claim rights. And more than claiming our rights, and more than having a, a spot, a seat at the table, we want to access and transform these spaces, and that is the important part for my activism. E pensando nisso, na minha atuação jurídica como advogada indígena, a gente começa a também pensar o direito, né? O direito que é produzido por pessoas não indígenas, que é operacionado por pessoas não indígenas e que decidem sobre nossas vidas. Então, a partir do acesso à justiça de nós, povos indígenas, fazendo a defesa com profissionais indígenas, a gente começa essa transformação do sistema acessado. Não é fácil, porém, tem que começar. Então, o meu desafio, né, enquanto advogada, é estar ali defendendo os direitos indígenas, mas também mudando esse sistema através da defesa dos nossos direitos a partir das nossas cosmovisões, aliando o conhecimento técnico que a gente aprende na academia, a letra da lei, mas também com aquilo que a gente traz de bagagem ancestral em nossas diversas lutas. So, as a lawyer, I learned um, the law written by non-indigenous peoples who were deciding what our lives would be. Uh, and it's not easy to change that, but we have to start. And um, we are there and we are changing through the system. 
uh, you have the letter of law, but you know, I have this part of learning this law made by uh, white people, but I also have my ancestral baggage. I also have the laws and the knowledges of um, my people, you know, and I try to, to, to get to a point in which we'll be able to write them ourselves. E já não me alongando muito, só um destaque aqui para um caso que que no Brasil é um caso chamado de repercussão geral, é um processo que tramita no Supremo Tribunal Federal, que é um processo muito importante para nós, povos indígenas, porque vai decidir o futuro das demarcações das nossas terras indígenas, que é o processo que coloca em xeque a tão falada tese do marco temporal. O que é a tese do marco temporal? É uma tese criada e de interesse de setores econômicos contrários à demarcação das terras indígenas, que é um direito constitucional, está previsto na Constituição, só que esses setores econômicos, né, principalmente econômicos e políticos, eles querem emplacar uma tese que limita no tempo o direito territorial dos povos indígenas. É como se congelasse no tempo é, para dizer quem tem direito ou não à terra. Essa data de referencial que querem emplacar é a data de 5 de outubro de 1988. Que data é essa? É a data de promulgação da nossa Constituição Federal de 88. Lembrando que a Constituição ela é um marco, um marco de conquista de direitos, e não um marco de limite de direitos. I would like to talk about um, the um, time frame limit thesis that is circulating right now in Congress. This is a very important um, uh, premise for us because economical and political sectors of Brazil are trying to limit our capacities of homologating our lands. And their thesis is that uh, they are sort of freezing time because we had a, a constitution in 88, uh, and this constitution gave rights to indigenous peoples uh, of their land. Um, and they are trying to trick the law into making it, um, because um, the constitution, it's not um, a moment in which you freeze rights. It's not a moment in which you say that uh, rights are established and you know nothing can happen after that. Uh, or before that. They are trying to create a premise in which um, any land that was uh, demarcated um, after, depois de 88, né? Que as terras são homologadas depois de 88 não tem validade. That the law, uh, that the, um, the land um, that existed before, um, I'm sorry, um, we are trying to build um, a premise that would help us to conquer um, our lands and not limit. The law should be, should be made in order for us to be enabled to homologate our lands. Maybe I'll just jump in there, so yes, just to clarify. So, so, so this, is, this, is, this is a huge debate and, uh, and at stake is the capacity of indigenous groups to keep homologating and claiming their right, their right but economic and political sectors were trying to pass a law which created a limit that no uh, law after the Constitution was declared uh, in 1988 that it would be possible to claim rights after that. So it's really to try to limit forever the possibility of people claiming. And we know there's still a lot of unclaimed territories, undesignated areas in Brazil, and many groups are still in the process of claiming their land. So basically, would put that on a complete halt and would make the land available, you know, for, you know, for settler colonialism. Thank you. Então, é, fechando esse ponto, também para não me alongar muito, é, essa nossa luta, esse é minha meu instrumento de luta. Né? Eu, eu luto dentro do judiciário, defendendo os direitos indígenas, e a voz dos povos indígenas em relação a esse processo é dizer não ao marco temporal e sim aos nossos direitos territoriais, que são direitos originários. Nós somos os primeiros povos habitantes do nosso país e o direito à terra não é favor, não é benevolência, é um direito. 
Né? E nós, como cidadãos e cidadãs indígenas, temos o direito de usufruir desse direito constitucional. Então, a, a forma que eu tenho de lutar, de colaborar com a luta do meu povo e dos demais povos indígenas do Brasil, de norte a sul, é poder levar a voz dos povos indígenas para dentro do judiciário brasileiro e poder transformar esse sistema que, pouco a pouco, a gente tem alcançado e acessado para transformá-lo. Just to close, so that I don't want to uh, elongate myself, I don't want to um, talk for too long. Um, this is our fight, uh, and I'm fighting in the judiciary, uh, and indigenous peoples are fighting to say uh, no to this thesis, and say uh, yes to our right for land. And our right for land is not benevolence, it's not a favor. We have uh, the right, we are the original peoples. Um, so, My fight is to collaborate from south to from north to south uh, in Brazil with the indigenous pa fight pa to help change change Brazil and change the um, the, um, the system from within. Thank you. Vamos fazer uma rodada agora de voltamos. So, so, so we will make a, a, a brief round of questions, and I, I would like to start with um, with um, Chai. Um, então, vou com, uh, I will say it in Portuguese, and then I will condense it to you guys in English, ok? So, Chai, estamos aqui celebrando a agência Resistência Yanomami, também conectando ela com as lutas de outros povos indígenas no Brasil e nos Estados Unidos. Para novamente lembrar o Davi Copenal, ele destaca no seu livro que os xamãs são como diplomatas nas dinâmicas humanas, não humanas, na floresta. Sabemos que você é uma voz ativa no debate global sobre mudanças climáticas, que tanto inspira a pensar outras realidades possíveis, outros caminhos, como você falou. Você poderia falar um pouco mais sobre o seu papel de caminhante pelo globo, e dessa tarefa de conectar mundos, e também sobre o papel da tecnologia na maneira como o seu povo, o Suruís, estão lidando agora já com os efeitos da mudança climática. So the question to Shai is that, uh, basically, the, David Kopenawa used to say that he was a diplomat between human and non-humans, as a shaman, and, uh, and Shai speaks of herself, you know, as a wanderer, connecting worlds as well just asking her to reflect a little bit more of her role in connecting worlds, as well as the role of technology that's so prominent among the Surui people in dealing already with the effects of climate change that are already experienced on the ground. Thank you for your question. Uh, okay, I, I like to to tell stories, so I will tell a story. Um, my people have uh, 64 uh, years with the content, uh, with the no indigenous. And when this happened, my grandpa was an adult. And in this time, when we have the demarcation of our lands, we are people fighting with the arrows and bow. Like that? Bow, yeah. And I remember I started a story uh, when they want to devastate our lands and take out the wood. And my grandpa uh, take his arrow and bow and looking, and they send a lot of uh, trucks to, to, to take our, uh, our wood. In, and my grandpa uh, take his arrow and boat and looking for the Labiwai, uh, Tabijara, the chief, and okay. You can try, but you, you will die. 
and they didn't take one tree from our our land. After that, uh, my grandpa said to my father, "Okay, you need to go to the city, learn about uh, how the white people think, and use it just to fight for our, our land." And my my dad uh, learned to speak Portuguese. He speak uh, a little bit uh, Portuguese, but he did the same with me. Okay, we will go there, and we will learn English. And now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so in, in more than this, in the past, my I, I say to my grandpa, uh, fighting with the arrows and bows, and today we fighting with the word and with the phones, and the people say in the, the the cameras with the GPS, the drones. And the people use this to say, you have an iPhone, you are not indigenous. And we are using this to denounce, to protect our culture, and to do a... Como é que eu falo contra a colonização? Como é que eu falo mais A contra colonization. colonization. Bring our cosmology and bring this all other ways, because in, in my land, we, I, I, I'm saying this to you because we have the solutions, really, to postpone the end of the world. And we are doing this in, in our lands now. In my land, we, we work with the bio-monitoring uh, that we monitoring our land and do the analysis of the fauna and flora. Fauna and flora. <laughs> <laughs> and we do this to, to know the, the consequence of the climate crisis, not only to us, but to the animals, to the forest. And we have a project with the reforestation that called PAMINI. The we burn the, the forest. Yeah? We burn the forest. To and now we win a prize, uh, the Nobel Green Prize, because this uh, this project, the reforestation. And when we uh, we do this, we use how, uh, I say to the technologies with the ancestral knowledge, and we work with the agroforest to not be a monoculture. Uh, we uh, work with the ethno tourism, and but I I say one thing, man. The people here, we, we, you are always uh, building new, new technologies. Ah, you uh, poison the river in building a machine to clean the water. You know? <laughs> so I, I say to you, now we use the technology with the ancestral knowledge to do our work to bring all, all, all this, this, uh, our realities and our work to the world. But you, you don't need more building new technologies. But because the better technology to win this fight already uh, exists and is the ancestral knowledge.
So I have a question now for, for Samaram, uh, uh, for some Portuguese, then I translate to guys. So, ontem, Samaram, na conversa em Princeton, você mencionou que você se sentia como uma flecha puxada pelo arco das suas comunidades, da luta ancestral, né? e como você trazia isso para dentro desses espaços que você agora ocupa. Né? Que você, você disse, eu sou plural, eu sou múltipla, eu sou muitas nesse lugar, e você também usou a expressão que a Chay usou agora, de fazer uma política contra-colonial, ou anticolonial. Então, eu queria que você falasse um pouquinho como você vê isso possível nesse momento político brasileiro, com o novo governo de Lula, quando se vê um apoio à causa indígena, Ministério dos Povos Indígenas, né? como você vê a possibilidade real e qual você vê que etapas seriam possíveis e importantes para essa indigenização do poder. Samara had a wonderful expression yesterday. She said that she, that she feels like an arrow, that she was pulled by her community, by her history, forward to go somewhere. And then when she lands as an arrow in those institutions, those places, she is many, she's multiple. She carries all that force that pulled back to the ancestral and moved her forward. And I asked her to elaborate a little bit more how she sees now in contemporary Brazil when we first, for the first time, have a ministry of indigenous peoples in the Lula government, which concrete steps that she see possible towards an anti-colonial form of governance in Brazil right now, along the lines of what she has been claiming, the need to indigenize politics. Obrigada. Então, é, atualmente, eu, eu, embora seja advogada, mas atualmente estou de licença da advocacia, e atualmente eu trabalho no Tribunal Superior Eleitoral. Um, well, I'm, I'm a lawyer, um, but um, nowadays I'm, I'm um, on vacation, I'm on um, license, license uh, like um, taking a license to, to be... Um, um, at the Superior Electoral Court. Sim. E no, no Tribunal Superior Eleitoral, eu comecei a trabalhar ano passado, 2022, na, no ano eleitoral. E eu sou assessora de inclusão e diversidade, né, no sentido de poder fomentar é, iniciativas que ampliem a participação política de grupos subrepresentados no processo eleitoral, que envolve mulheres, negros, indígenas população LGBTQIA+, é, pessoas com deficiência e, possivelmente, outros grupos também subrepresentados. Um, nowadays, I'm in the um, a special committee for diversity and inclusion in the electoral process, since 2022, actually. Um, and I'm working with the population that is underrepresented in the electoral, in the electoral system, uh, LGBTQ um, population, um, what's the, the women, indigenous, uh, indigenous peoples, um, people of color, and uh, people with disabilities, and LGBTQ I plus amongst uh, other groups. Por que, que eu comecei falando disso? Porque se nós, eu, a Chai e outros indígenas, nós somos essa flecha, né? essa flecha ela foi lançada para que a gente possa estar em vários lugares, inclusive num tribunal superior eleitoral, em um ano eleitoral, no qual é, você discute a participação em, também né, indígena de grupos subrepresentados no processo eleitoral, em um ano eleitoral, mas também a longo prazo. É, esse desafio, para mim, ele me permite olhar hoje né, é, esses diversos cenários e sobre a importância de termos mais representações né, desses segmentos no espaço de poder, tanto não só indígenas, mas também de outros grupos, como mencionamos anteriormente. Um, so, why did I start like this? Why did I start this work? Why, and why did I say that um, 
um, this about the error, uh, about being a, a, an error. Um, because if me and if Chai, if we are error, errors to bring knowledge, we are also errors to uh, bring our presence and bring transformation to the, the to many places, but also to the superior electoral court. We can be there, um, and we can be there in an electoral uh, in, in a year in which we are having um, voting. So we can be there in an electoral year, but uh, also we should be there in the long run. Um, we should see from all, in, in this opportunity that I'm having, it's giving me uh, insight about all the segments and all the, um, the little, um, the, the big and, um, and small holes in the system, how people are not being seen. I've, I've been able to get this intersectional uh, view. Sim. Então, tudo isso faz parte daquilo que o movimento indígena no Brasil hoje tem encarado como aldear a política. O, o João falou... Indig, é, como é que você falou, João? Indigene, indigenizar. Só que o movimento indígena tem usado a palavra aldear a política. E essa foi uma das chaves, uma das, uma das chamadas que o movimento indígena fez para candidaturas de pessoas indígenas e a efetiva eleição né, de, de deputadas e de representantes indígenas, como alcançamos a, a, a eleição da Sônia Guajajara e da Célia Chacriabá para a Câmara dos Deputados, e a Sônia, né, hoje, como ministra dos povos indígenas. Então, elas são nítidos exemplos desse projeto né, de construção coletiva de aldear a política. So, All of this is part of a plan to, I'll say here for better words, to indigenize politics, uh, to, to make uh, politics a, a, big, um, a big hut, like uh, to build a village inside the political system. Um, so we were calling for, this was like our motto, we were calling for that in our elections, uh, to, to indigenize politics through our representatives. Um, so we, we had uh, two um, successes, Sonia Guajajara and uh, Celia Chacriabá. Uh, Sonia Guajajara became the Minister of Indigenous Peoples, um, of the Originary Peoples. Uh, it's a new minister in Brazil. Então, é, isso mostra a capacidade que nós povos indígenas temos de que, em meio a um sistema, em meio a um cenário desfavorável para ocuparmos democraticamente muitos espaços, a gente consegue se mobilizar para ampliar esse espaço. E aí eu volto a dizer, não basta acessar o sistema, temos que transformar o sistema acessado. E, com certeza, essas representantes indígenas hoje, tanto no parlamento como no poder executivo, aponta esses caminhos possíveis no futuro. E também eu pretendo que, com o meu trabalho, onde eu estou hoje, estrategicamente, também possa... É, ampliar esses horizontes para que a gente tenha mais participação indígena na política, no judiciário, em outros espaços também, para aldear né, diversos espaços, seja ele qual for. So this shows our capacity uh, to be occupying these spaces, in, even in a year that was really uh, not favorable for indigenous peoples. We were suffering so many attacks from the Bolsonaro administration. So um, we want to amplify this presence because uh, it's, it's not, as I said before, it's not just a seat at the table, we need to transform it. We need to transform the parliament, the executive, and yes, of, of course. Uh, so from the point of where I stand now, I can amplify uh, our voices and I can make up space for other people. And also, um, and not, To be in, we are amplifying the spaces to be in politics, to be in the judiciary instance, and many other spaces. They need to be indigenized too. Só mais uma coisa. Então, nesse novo cenário atual de novo governo, embora tenhamos um Ministério dos Povos Indígenas e aparentemente parece assim, ah, enfim, aldeamos a política, estamos dentro do poder executivo, é, as coisas elas não estão resolvidas, né? É um passo importante mas não a solução de todos os problemas. Isso requer também vários esforços. Né? O, o Estado brasileiro 
é que nem ontem eu falei, né? Parabéns por fazer o mínimo, né? Não é, não é algo é importante, é extraordinário, é a primeira vez que temos um ministério com uma ministra de Estado de origem indígena, mas por que que demoramos mais 500 anos para ter uma ministra, né? Um, um ministério indígena, né? Eu acho que ainda é pouco. Quatro anos vai ser pouco para você poder compensar e fazer uma reparação histórica de muitos anos de violações de direitos. Mas a gente enxerga isso como o início né, dessa uhum. caminhada, mas que nós não possamos lutar sozinhos. Não é um ministério que vai resolver tudo, mas que ainda a sociedade civil, o movimento indígena, segue mobilizado, as nossas vozes seguem ecoando, e nós continuaremos a ser flechas, né, flechas bem, bem certeiras em lugares específicos para pensar em um mundo melhor, não só para a gente, mas para todas as pessoas. Obrigada. So, um, in this um, in this landscape, this scenery that we have right now, this um, this context, um, although we are finally here and finally indigenizing these spaces, uh, this is not enough. And also, the, from the perspective of the Brazilian state, well, congratulations for doing the bare minimum for us. <laughs> Because, you know, to have a, a ministry of indigenous peoples is just the bare minimum. Um, and it took you 500 years to do so, so congratulations. In four years, Four years is not enough for reparation. Uh, we see this as just the beginning. Um, and we are going to be indigenizing these spaces in the civil society, in the indigenous movements. We are going to be here. And uh, we are going to continue to be errors, to be arrows, to be pointing to these places to indigenize them. And it, we are going to continue to indigenize them and continue to throw these arrows to make a better world, not just for the indig indigenous peoples, for, but actually for all of us. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it's, it's time to open up the conversation. And I think one word that uh, Samara also said, we want to be precise arrows, you know, just to go with a precision, right? So we want to open the space to collect a few questions. And as we like to say, Uh, at Princeton or Brazil Lab events, let's try to exercise the art of condensation. So, so if we can get like brief comment, one question, and then we collect three or four as a bundle for our for our guests, and then they will give a combined response, and we might have time for an additional bundle. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, <clears throat> this must sound very simple, but. Here in America, is there anything I could do as an American to write to a certain organization, or is there an email, or a person, or a committee uh, that I could also pass it on to my friends? That's great. That's great. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, the indigen indigenizing of institutions, organizations, political structures. Yeah. Is FUNAI, is it possible to sort of restore the role of FUNAI, um, which was all the funding, it was really, well, the sound of like just destroyed FUNAI. Is there a way, is that possible to do that or are you thinking of completely different um, structures? Can you please talk about ways that children are being enculturated into this kind of thinking and how you're working in different school systems to sensitize curriculum to these values and cultural continuity? Should I take one more? One more, yes, mm -hmm. great. They're wonderful questions, really good. Hi, it's particularly wonderful that you're both women And I'm wondering if you could say something about um, gender 
in terms of indigenous people in Brazil? Do you see particular focus there? And also related to the art and cosmology. I know that's a big question, but something about, as we look at the exhibition, the role of gender and women artists and presentation of women in the art as well as in politics and society. Thank you. Awesome. Chai, you want to get started? <laughs> Eu vou responder a primeira dela e acho que a segunda é okay. So, how you can help uh, like an American people? I think it's important you you know about what's going on in Brazil, not on, né, only in Brazil. We need uh, support, financial support. Uh, you you can follow what uh, our organization are doing and but I'll, that's a thing that I think is important to remember. You have indigenous peoples here and our fight it's only one fight. The indigenous fight. So you can help us and this is very important to the world but you need to look to the indigenous peoples in the USA as well. Então, é, respondendo a segunda pergunta sobre a questão de aldear, higienizar a política e como fazer isso, tendo em vista todo o cenário destruidor que nossas instituições indigenistas e a nossa democracia sofreu. É como a frase que o João leu, que nós relembramos ontem na nossa conversa, e o movimento indígena tem falado no Brasil, que é nunca mais um país, um Brasil sem nós. Ou seja, é, através de estarmos nesses lugares estratégicos que os povos indígenas levam essa visão coletiva para reconstruir o que foi destruído. É o reflorestamento também das instituições. Ou, melhor ainda, como as mulheres indígenas têm falado, reflorestar mentes nas instituições, ou na, na política, ou em diversos espaços. Então, a FUNAI ela foi mais uma vítima né, de todos os desmontes que as instituições sofreram no Brasil, mas hoje, a partir do momento em que temos uma presidência do órgão indigenista, né, uma mulher indígena de referência, como a atual presidente, a Joênia Mapichana, embora todo o cenário ainda difícil que temos de reconstruir, mas é importante saber que essa reconstrução está sendo feita de forma coletiva, porque antes, até dezembro do ano passado, a gente tinha um presidente da FUNAI, que era um delegado de Polícia Federal, bolsonarista, anti-indígena, anti-direitos humanos, o que, que ele estava fazendo lá? Destruindo. Então, embora não seja fácil, mas a gente pode esperançar, eu acho, de que nunca mais um Brasil sem nós, em diversos espaços, isso também não é fácil, assumir essa responsabilidade de reconstruir. Mas, quando isso passa pelo coletivo, isso fortalece. Porque, embora seja a Joênia, embora seja a Sônia Guajajara no Ministério dos Povos Indígenas, é, não são elas sozinhas. Elas trazem com elas toda a força né, dos povos indígenas. E, infelizmente, também, a gente tem indígenas que também são anti-indígenas. E isso é algo grave. E pessoas que se aliam com pensamentos, né, principalmente do, do governo anterior, e que entregam de mão beijada nossos direitos coletivos, né, negociam direitos que são sagrados para nós, como os nossos territórios, como a nossa coletividade. Então, assim, não, é, não bastava ser indígena, a FUNAI ter uma presidência indígena, precisava ser uma indígena aliada com o que a coletividade pensa e defende. Não bastava ser qualquer indígena no Ministério dos Povos Indígenas, precisava também uma pessoa indígena que tenha o movimento indígena como sua base. Então, é isso, a reconstrução e higienizar ele passa muito pela coletividade e a força que a gente tem juntos, né, para poder reconstruir tudo aquilo que foi destruído. Então, é uma grande task now, Ana. <laughs> so, uh, talking about institutions, talking about Funai, uh, the foundation of uh, the National Foundation of Indigenous Peoples of Brazil. Um, so now we have Joana Wapichana, and it's important 
to have her there, it's vital. It's being reconstructed, uh, but it's being reconst reconstructed, and I would say not just reconstructed, but reforested. We are reforesting institutions. And in this process, we are doing this collectively. For us, it's very important um, to be doing this process uh, because it shouldn't be just any indigenous person in this position of power. It should be someone who actually talks to the collective, represents the collective, because we had a case um, of an indigenous uh, so-called representative who was actually anti-indigenous and who was working with uh, the Bolsonaro administration. That was a case that I'm, we would like to avoid. So it needs to be an indigenous person who is aligned and connected to our fight. And it's, yeah, it, it shouldn't be just uh, someone who is indigenous. It's important to have our knowledge because our rights are sacred to us. And it's important to respect the fact that they are sacred uh, so that we can have hope so that we can have um, a collective responsibility being uh, dealt with together. And, um, and we are not alone. Uh, with Juenia, with uh, Sonia, they are not alone. When they are there, all of us are there. Great. Uh, yeah, cool. yeah. So we have the question of education and then the question of gender. Okay, yeah. Da educação, é. Sobre a pergunta sobre educação. É, tanto a gente tem a questão da educação própria, de nós, povos indígenas, a gente fala da educação escola indígena, que são os nossos conhecimentos tradicionais, como a gente passa isso, é, embora toda a diversidade de povos, de culturas, cada povo indígena tem um processo também de aprendizagem, de passar os conhecimentos tradicionais. E também tem a, a educação institucionalizada dentro das é. aldeias, desculpa, que é a educação escolar indígena. Então, podemos dizer que temos a educação indígena e a educação escolar indígena. Né? A educação indígena é essa da ancestralidade, da oralidade, de passar os conhecimentos né, ancestrais no seio da família, da coletividade. E a educação escolar indígena é tudo isso num espaço institucionalizado, é, mais as disciplinas, as matérias que a gente aprende a ler, a escrever. Então, a gente fala do processo também de educação indígena no sentido de formação da gente, enquanto cidadãos e cidadãs também, em um mundo caótico, em um mundo cada vez mais exploratório, predador, né? capitalista. Então, como, como acontece também a formação de lideranças, né? da Chay, da Samara e de outros líderes indígenas também, é, dentro desse contexto. Então, eu falei desse ponto da educação indígena, da educação escolar indígena, e como a gente passa isso também para os não indígenas. né? E aí, no Brasil, a gente tem leis que, inclusive, obrigam que as escolas é, brasileiras possam ensinar noções básicas de cultura afro-brasileira e indígena. Então, assim, porque o que os livros de histórias contavam né, era uma história, como eu falei logo no início da minha fala, mais cedo, a história contada a partir dos tidos como vencedores. Então, você precisa de uma lei no Brasil que obrigue a inserir também as, as nossas narrativas, enquanto afro-brasileiros, enquanto indígenas, para que as pessoas tenham um conhecimento mínimo de quem são né, as pessoas que compõem o nosso país. Então, a questão indígena hoje, a gente tem uma lei específica que obriga, mas, mesmo assim, infelizmente, ainda deixa muito a desejar o cumprimento dessas leis. Mas a gente, eu começo a enxergar de maneira positiva já um, um novo cenário, que, inclusive, tem um fato interessante de uma colega minha, é, do, do, da pós-graduação, ela chegou para a filha dela, pequena, da escola, assim, e falou, filha, você sabia que a mamãe tem uma colega que é índia? Aí a filha falou, mamãe, não é indi índia que fala, é indígena. <risos> Então, olha, já começamos a mudar um pouco essas concepções, né? Índio, indígena, né? tribo, são palavras assim colonizadoras, que a gente percebe que muitas escolas têm se sensibilizado. É o um mínimo, mas assim é algo que nos traz esperança de que a gente vê uma nova geração mais interessada e preocupada com a diversidade, com os povos indígenas, com a natureza, com tudo isso. Então, é, eu falo da educação aqui, do ponto de vista de nós, indígenas, mas como também temos que adentrar em espaços ainda não indígenas, 
Enfim, é isso. Thank you. So when we talk about um, an indigenous school, uh, an indigenous education, um, we have our traditional knowledges uh, that should be included in this indigenous school, in, in, uh, in this school that is made for indigenous peoples in Brazil. So we have two curriculums. We have a normal curriculum, the, um, the mathematics, um, letters, whatever. Um, and we have a second one that is from our own um, uh, indigenous knowledges. That is a curriculum that was made uh, with our orality, with our uh, ancestrality, with our ancestry. Um, and this knowledge is in the center of our families, is in the center of our activism. And um, we are doing a formation that um, will, will not only help indigenous peoples, but that is a formation that can, can and should also be uh, outside the indigenous school. We need to indigenize the school too. Um, so how do we teach uh, the non-indigenous? Um, there's a law that obliges schools in Brazil to teach Afro-Brazilian and indigenous cultures. And this is, uh, as I said in the beginning of my talk, um, the history that we have been taught is a history of the um, conquerors of the supposed winners. And that's the history that has been taught in schools. And um, we have this law that will protect our knowledges and our ways of being uh, narrated in this history. Um, and it's, it's the bare minimum, and it's not always the case. It's not, um, sometimes it's not being taught. It's not being followed, the law. Um, so we are fighting for the, um, for the law to be respected and to be um, implemented. Uh, and I have a, a little anecdote. A, a colleague of mine, uh, her, um, her daughter, um, she was telling this colleague of mine that um, um, actually, um, sorry, um, the daughter of one of my colleagues, she corrected my friend because um, my friend who works with me, um, she, she told her little daughter that she had uh, an Indian friend. And then her daughter said, no, 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 you have an indigenous friend. So it's not a, uh, Indian, it's indigenous. So these are words that can be colonizers. Uh, words have this weapon, that they have this potential. So we are trying to build a school that will bring us the hope uh, for the next generations, for them to be more conscious about the environment of the, uh, for them to be more conscious about uh, diversity um, and to enter these non-indigenous spaces in our own words. Great. And we want to hear from final words from, from Chai now, responding to that question of the, uh, which you, you rightly pointed out, that was exactly the idea of the panel. We wanted to, to finish you know, the third event on the series of events, you know, bringing the, the new generation, young woman, strong women activists uh, representing their peoples, you know, the, the forest, uh, representing, you know, a, a different transform, transformed and transformational presence. So, so the question of gender and cosmology, Chai, and whatever you want to leave us with today. <laughs> um, so, as uh, Samara said about the, the indigenous that sometimes have the uh, Bolsonaristas mind, and when this happened, it's a man's. And the woman's nev uh, never, and when this happened, the women never uh, did this. We always in the front protect our lands, you know? So some, uh, when we see this happening, the, the women always be in protected um, our rights because to us, uh, the, to my, in my culture, uh, the women come from the trees and the trees is sacred to us. And so we are sacred too. And who can uh, understand better uh, the forest? So we, if you, we not 
us, the women, you know? And, and uh, I say this, this thing about the, the, the mind colonization because when uh, she was saying about that, I remember the book about a uh, bookie of the France Panon about the black uh, bodies in white mask. And I think about the uh, red uh, bodies, white mask. Because this comes from the colonization as well. But the, wo the women never, um, they shot them. Never left. Left, just happened, you know? And in to finish my, my, my speech, because I know we have time, I, now I'm uh, in a campaign, is Samara Patasho to Supreme Court, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, thank you all for being here. Thank you, the shed, <laughs> right, for being together. <laughs>